today you'll see a beautiful shirt dress it has a super easy collar the button placket is also super easy to sew you can make it as long or as short as you want and i've got two to share one in a print one in a solid stay tuned hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and i have some woven sewing to share today the pattern is a shirt dress and it's brand new from Pattern Emporium. It's called Take the Chance. I love the name because I think there's a lot of features here that if you've never sewn before, you'll really be able to do it. You just need to take the chance, right? So <laughs> it's a really relaxed fit. I don't anticipate you having many fitting issues with this type of dress. You have the easiest shirt collar ever. It's so, so easy to sew, very, very doable. Of course, I'm showing you how to do it. To make it even easier, the button placket that goes down the center is integrated into the front piece so it's not a separate piece that you have to add on which makes it also super easy and you have a bodice seam that will hit your waist and then below that you can add a whole different combination of lengths of tiers and number of them to get whatever length you want you can have a really mini dress that is two short tiers one that is above the knee a long tee and a short tee or a midi one that adds two long tiers or even three long ones to get a really maxi one. So you can combine all of those to get the length that you really want. So I'm always in the shorter versions, of course. You will never see me in a maxi, it's just not my thing. Although I think they look beautiful on other people. I've tried to wear them and I just don't feel myself and I just don't feel my best. So that's why I don't sew maxis, but I do think they're beautiful. So with this center front button placket, you can choose to just go easy and just do it up to the bodice. And then you can sew your skirt tees on the fold. So you can see in the line out there, you won't have this button feature go all the way down to the hem. Or you can add this to every single tee that you sew on. So in that case, you would need to interface the skirt tees also. So it's up to you what you wanna do. You have enough space to pull this over your head. So if you don't want to do button holes, you don't have to. You can sew the buttons right through and just pull it on. Or you can do snaps, or you can do button holes. It's up to you. At the back, the bodice is cut on the fold, and you have a small yoke piece. For the sleeves, you have a lot of options. You have two types of short sleeves. One is a regular short sleeve. That's the one I've sewn. The other sleeve has a little bit more ease. It's not a super wide sleeve, but if you constantly have to do bicep adjustments. You might not need to if you just use the wider sleeve piece. It'll fit the same armhole. It'll just give you a little bit more room around the arm. So you have those options. Then for longer sleeves, you can do three quarters or long. And there's a myriad of little details you can do around here. You can do a casing, you can do some ties, you can fold it back. So you can have a lot of fun with the sleeves if you want a longer one. And the other pattern that's on sale for this release is the Meet You There dress. This is the one I'm wearing right now. The sleeves on this dress are interchangeable with the Take the Chance dress. So this one, for example, is a wider sleeve that has a bit more room here and a casing right there. It's a shorter sleeve. It's very pretty, very comfortable. Whatever sleeve options the Meet You dress has, you can add on to the Take the Chance and then you have even more options to play around with. If you want to bring this closer to your waist, you can add ties at the side seams. This Meet You dress is similar, so it's got a little bit of space here and I do have the ties just to bring it in a little closer. It's optional if you want to put those in or not. Remember that the new Take the Chance dress and the Meet You There dress, this is the one, are both 15% off through Monday midday in Australian timing around Brisbane. So over here around Sunday night, 15% off. You don't need to put in any code. I will leave you my affiliate link down below. You don't pay any extra when you click on my link. It just takes you directly to the pattern and I receive a small commission back from that sale. One of the ways that I do earn some income by doing all this work on YouTube. So I'm very grateful if you use my link if you wanna buy your patterns. This is a design for woven fabric, so a knit fabric is definitely not going to work. If you tried to do this with a knit, you would have a hard time dealing with the collar and the button placket. Just forget about knits, <laughs> there are plenty of other knit styles at Pattern Emporium. So just leave the shirt dress for wovens, I think it, it will just work out better. And you can use light to medium weight fabrics. Some are more drapey and I think those are the ones I always choose. Around the rayon type of fabrics, 100% rayon, rayon linen blend, a tensile would be super nice, a crepe. Those are the ones I would choose. But then you can also choose shirting, poplin, like a sea sucker, a light linen fabric maybe, a cotton lawn. Those are still light fabrics, 
but they will probably stand out further away from your body with the gathered feature there. So it's up to you and the aesthetic that you like. Whenever I do gathers, I tend to keep the fabrics light and very flowy. That is the way I feel good in gathers. Other notions, you need a fusible interfacing. You need that for the upper collar and the center area of your bodice and also the center area of your skirt tees if you're doing that option. If you're doing your skirt on the fold on the front then you don't need it for that area but you do need some fusible interfacing. Just try to match it with the fabric that you're using. Because I'm using rayon, I'm keeping it very lightweight, very lightweight fusible interfacing, non-stretch. You also need buttons. Depending on what you want, you're gonna need a few or a lot of buttons. I made one of these versions with a bodice just to the waist and then the skirt is on the fold. So in that case, I only used five buttons. But then for another version, I went ahead and used like 14 because the buttons go all the way down to the bottom. Because this is a newer pattern, you have sizes from four to 30 Australian. That goes up to a 54 and 3 8 inch bust at the full bust and a 58 and 3 quarter inch hip. Although I think if your hips are slightly larger than this, you could get away with making it also because these skirt tees have a lot of space at the hips. So it's easy to fit. You have about six inches of ease around the full bust, about eight to 10 at the waist, and then a lot at the hips. Choose your size based on your high bust measurement right here. So on the upper bust, take that into account. Look, at, look that up on the chart. That is your base size so that your neck your shoulders and your sleeves fit really well. If you then need to blend in or out to other waist sizes, go ahead and do that. But this is your base size based on your high bust. So for the bodice, I think it's really great because you see two cut lines there for the length. There is a longer bodice option for a taller person like me that is two inches longer than the regular bodice length. And from sewing a lot of other pattern emporium patterns in woven, I know that that longer length bodice for tall people suits me perfectly. I don't have to make any changes. It fits me perfect in the front and the back. I think any bodice really needs to hit at the waist to look proper on you. And then you can have the skirt coming down with the tears. If it's just longer, it usually does not look good. If it's too short, it doesn't look good either. I've chosen a size 18. Actually, you see a range of measurements there for each size and all of my measurements fall into that one size, which makes it super easy for me. <laughs> for sewing, the seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch everywhere. It's very easy to put together. I have filmed a lot of the sewing for you. I'm gonna show you how I interface the center area, how to put it together. I'm doing a sneaky burrito roll in the pattern. You just have one layer for the yolk, which I guess makes it easier to sew. But if you have enough fabric, why not cut two layers and enclose those seams? I'm gonna show you that. How to sew the collar. The collar is so nice, it's so easy. And how to sew the gathering onto the bodice with the skirt on the fold. And if you're doing it with the buttons all the way down. So lots to see, <laughs> grab some type of beverage and let's enjoy the sewing. This is a shirt dress and the center front has an integrated facing which makes the sewing much easier. On the pattern piece you'll see that there's a dash line there and it says you have to interface that area. So to, just to make it easier I just measured how much that was and I interfaced my fabric first. When I do this I use the selvages as the edges and then I can put my pattern piece on top match where the interfacing is with where it's supposed to be on the pattern piece and then I can cut out. I find it's a really accurate way to interface and also easier than cutting into facing separately. I am stay stitching the necklines first before I do anything. I'm going from the shoulder to the center and then again from the other shoulder to the center. I'm, I'm stay stitching directionally. So you can see I'm doing that with the front. I have a sneaky seam on my center back yoke piece just because I wanted the detail of the print there. So just ignore that it's there. So what I have here is my yoke right sides together with my back and if you're doing a single layer then you would just sew that together but I have a second layer for the yoke right here so basically if I remove the back piece out of the way these two yokes are right sides together like that with the back in between so my second yoke the one that's going to be inside is right side to wrong side of the back so I have three layers there and all I'm going to do is sew this straight seam 3 8 seam allowance I find it really difficult to not do a yoke in two layers, especially if I have enough fabric and especially if the fabric is really light like this rayon. If I was working with a cotton or a chambray, a shirting, then I'd probably be really happy with one layer. But 
why not it's not hard to do okay so we have the back this is what i wanted on the back just so it looks different i didn't want just full-on polka dot on the back that's why i united these pieces right there on the inside my second layer is going to look like that it's got the same polka dots so i'm just going to do a quick burrito you just take your front piece and you pin it onto your main yoke right here at the shoulder seams so you leave your second yoke your inner yoke hanging back there on its own so there we have both layers pin the front to the back yoke right there the main yoke and i'm just going to base these together smaller than the 3 8 seam allowance it's just going to be a temporary stitch Here we have these temporary shoulder seams and we have everything hanging off like this and all you need to do now is roll up this blouse just roll it all up and when you roll it up you're gonna find the inner yoke right here so you're gonna take this shoulder seam and just bring it over make the roll and now you are going to align this inner yoke to these two layers that we have already sewn we pin that there same as on this side and now that's what we sew super easy okay so i have already sewn one of the shoulder seams i'm sewing with a regular stitch length at the proper seam allowance that is three eighths and i'm halfway down this other shoulder seam right here i thought i had been filming but i wasn't <laughs> now I am okay so there was the little roll I'd rather not take everything out through the neckline just to keep it nice and safe we still have a collar to sew on so I'd rather just take everything through one armhole and just do it really gently it'll come out okay there we are <laughs> came out this is the right side of the top this is the back yoke right there the polka dots here are the fronts this is the front neckline here from the wrong side it's always so nice because you get the shoulder seams enclosed and then the yoke seam enclosed and it's always so nice on i really like the feeling of this so if you have a little bit of extra fabric lying around to cut a second layer i would i just think it's always really nice especially with really light fabrics like this what we're going to do is get this ready to press so on this outer edge i'm going to do a guide stitch at 3 8 so we can press this in by 3 8 then it's 1 and 5 8 but basically i have my guide here with the interfacing and i've placed it right along that white stripe here so i think this stripe really helps i know i have to press right there for the second fold so i don't really need to worry about measuring Now we're gonna prepare the top of the center front for the collar later. You can see I've got that fold there. So on the pattern, it will say fold. Off to each side, it will say center front, and then to the other side, it will say center front. And I've marked those right there with a friction pen. So we have already got this crease that we've done at the iron. I'm just gonna put a pin there where that is. And then just bring the fabric over, right sides together. You can see the mark there matches the one on the other side. And now all we have to do is do the tiniest of stitch from this folded edge up to there. That's it. And you need to back tack and reinforce that. Seam allowance is 3 8 So we're going to do that on this side and the same thing on the other side. So you can see how tiny the seam is. Now we need to snip into there, right there. And now we can flip this to the other side right here. And then we're gonna have this little bit that's raw and then this section that's finished. And then this is gonna be caught inside the collar at a later stage. So this is a little bit of a delicate area. I would try not to manipulate it that much. And we repeat the same on the other side. I have hand basted down these facings on the center front right here. Because my skirts are going to be on the fold, I'm not going to continue the button feature down to this area. Then I, that means I can do this top stitching right now and get it out of the way. If you are going to attach the skirt that's also going to have the buttons, then you will do this at a later stage. But I'm just going to do this now and then we can put the collar together. Here are the two collar pieces. The interfaced one is the upper collar and the non-interfaced one is the under collar. What I've done to the upper collar already is do a guide stitch at 3 8 and press the raw edge in. So that's on the bottom edge. 
you see that the collar goes that way so you know that the narrow edge is the bottom edge we haven't done anything to under collar i'm just going to leave that one there right sides up and put the upper collar on top match them up and we're going to sew this way across the top and then back down but for the under collar we're going to leave it extended so we're going to have three eighths of an inch protruding right there and that's the way we're going to sew these together okay so there are both layers pinned and ready to sew I need to point out that the upper collar and the under collar have their own pattern pieces. They are not identical pieces. And now I'm just going to go ahead and sew at 3 8 seam allowance. It is hard to see because I've sewn it with beige color. I do have blue on the bobbin, it's just that I have a lot of beige there. You can see there I don't pivot, I finish and then I start again. I find it reinforces that area. So I'm just going to fold these onto each other here at this intersection of seams towards the non-interfaced collar here and then just hold it firmly and flip and you get a really nice point right there without trying too hard. And same as over here and then I'm just going to head to the iron and just flip this over properly and just get it ready so we can sew it onto the neckline. There's a nice point there too. Okay so here is the collar turned right sides out, pressed nice and neat. Now here on this under collar this is where we're going to sew it to the neckline. I do have a tiny tiny mark for the center back right here. I'll just put a pin so it's easier to see. A little further to the sides we have a mark that's going to match the yoke seam right here and then over here as well. There I can see it. <laughs> So here we have the neckline. I do have that center seam on this yoke that's going to help me be a reference. It's not supposed to be there, mine just has it and I'm just going to match the center back of this under collar there with the center back of the neckline right sides together. Then this pin is going to match the shoulder seam here of the yoke right there. So just get your main references pinned and ready and then you can pin in between. And then over here we have this 3 8 seam allowance that was protruding from the folded edge remember this is the one that's going to meet this little edge right here so we need to keep the upper collar out of the way when we sew this and then over here it's the same thing this edge matches that little edge right there this is the easiest way to sew this type of collar i find so i'm just going to pin everything in between and then we can sew that seam okay i ended up hand basting my under collar to the neckline i think i'll just manage it better rayon is a little slippery when you want to keep layers together so i always think hand basting is good I've got these edges hand basted right there where that snip is matching exactly where this extra seam allowance is and I've done the same on both. So I'll just be really careful to sew exactly right there, really flush against that edge and then just keep going at 3 eighths. And just fiddle with the needle until you're really happy where it's gonna land right there. <laughs> So this is the inside of the blouse. We do need to snip around these curves, of course. But here, I just wanted to show you how this folded edge is just going to cover all of that raw area right there. The edge of the collar right there. And it's going to be super neat. Just such an easy way to sew a collar. I really love it. Here on this side as well, you just push all that seam allowance up. Bring this folded edge that we'd already done and just cover all of that. So once I snip everything, I'm going to come and cover the seam with the fold of the upper collar right there. Hand baste it and then we can top stitch around the collar and that's it with the collar. It's really easy. Okay, I've snipped into all of these curves here. And I just want to show you what's going to happen here. So just take all the seam allowance and tuck it in there. Bring this folded edge over to cover that seam that we've just done. And voila, you get a really nice clean finished edge there. There is a little bit protruding there. That's part of the design that's supposed to be like that. The collar is not supposed to reach the edge. And now I'm just going to keep pinning and then I'll hand baste of course before top stitching. Okay, there it is hand basted on. Now, because my print is pretty busy and rayon is not that great to top stitch, just what you need for function, all I'm gonna top stitch is this, the edge right there. I'm not gonna go ahead and do all around here. I would do that if I was working with cotton or linen or chambray, 
but for this rayon I don't really think it's going to look that great now what I wanted to show you was the upper collar is this one right here what we have under there is the under collar and this under collar is a little bit shorter and you can see that because it's a little bit shorter it makes the seam roll to the back so what you get here on this collar is a beautiful edge with a fold and you don't really see that seam so it favors the seam going this way so I really think that's great and that's why the under collar is a separate pattern piece and it's not the same as the upper collar and you get this really lovely effect like that. Lovely drafting. I've got my blind hem presser foot with the needle to the left there and that's what I'm going to use to do this top stitching right here. I think it just helps and it's just so much easier. So I love this way of sewing a collar, I think it's so easy to do, I think that little snip that you do at the beginning is so much easier to handle and then just put the collar on top. There are other methods that make this technique harder but this is really nice. When you wear it this is how the collar is going to look like this so that's why the top stitching needs to be neat on this side where the upper collar is. That's why I didn't do the back tuck right there. I think that would have looked hideous on top of that navy print. So I'm just going to bring these threads to the back and do a tiny little knot right here at the back where it won't be seen. Beautiful, beautiful collar. I love this collar technique. I absolutely love it. It's really doable. If you've never done a collar before, you're going to be able to do this one for sure. Now I'm going to try it on and figure out my buttonhole placements here. If you didn't want to do buttonholes, you don't have to. You can try it on and mark where you want your buttons. You can sew your buttons right through and then just slip it on over your head. You know, the opening here is enough for you to put your head through. But I'm going to go ahead and do the buttonholes. After I've done that, I'm going to overlap these two right there base that and then I'm going to have a completed front and that's where I'm going to do the gathering for the layer that I'm going to sew in there. I'm sewing on this tee to the bottom of the waist and I'm just doing the front first then I'll do the same thing on the back and then I'll sew the side seams. I, th I find the gathers easier to manage when I do small sections like that and I'm just using the traditional method for gathering. I just sewed two rows with a really long stitch length at 5.0 and then just gathered the T to fit the waist area. The gathers on top so I can manage them and see what's going on and the bodice is at the bottom. This is my black shirt dress. I have already done the collar because for this one I'm going to continue this same feature all the way down so I have buttons from the top all the way down to the hem. I haven't top stitched this yet so it's just folded in like that. I did my collar no drama but this is still loose. So what I have here at the bottom is my skirt piece. These skirt pieces are gathered but I don't want to gather from the very edge of course. I want this to be smooth. So from the fold here where you have the interfacing for about an inch and a half I've left it without gathering and then I started my rows of gathering right there. So when this folds back I'm going to have a smooth section there and the gathers are going to start a little further from this way. This is the bottom of the bodice for the front and you can see that the T for the skirt is wider. So in this section is where I'm going to do the gathering, pin it all and then I can sew it all in one go and that will unite the bodice with the skirt. They have the same fold lines right there and then this is all going to go inside like this for the integrated facing. Okay so here I have one of the fronts. This is the center front there where the integrated facing is. You can see I've got a section where I don't have gathers so that this can fold back smoothly. And then the gathers start here all the way over to the side seam. So we'll just get that sewn at 3 eighths of an inch and repeat that on both sides. And that is basically how the front comes together. So here's the collar. We go down and 
and we have the seam that unites the bodice with the gathers. Whenever you have gathers, I find it easier to just leave the seam allowance going up, it's less bulky that way. And then here, I'm just going to leave the seam allowance in the same way, fold that in once, fold that in again, and that's how the bodice unites to the skirt, like that. And then we top stitch there. Of course, this needs to be surged first, but it's super easy. This is one way you can do this option that has the buttons all the way down. For the other one I made, I just did a skirt on the fold, so then you just overlap this and just sew the gathers all the way across. It's a little easier. Remember, you can customize the length of these tees to whatever you want. So I did a sneaky take the chance top. It's not a dress with bodice. I added just one of those short tees and made it a tad longer. So about maybe two inches longer than the short tee. And I get this. This is just one fabric. It was a type of border print. So I do have some pieces going on the cross grain, but you know, I'm never against that. Actually, this part is going on the cross grain because the selvage was this way. This section is on the straight of grain. So you can see that I've played with the stripes like that. I really wanted these features here in the center. I left all the polka dots that were in the center of the fabric for the short sleeves right here. I just did the regular short sleeves. And I have polka dots on the back, part here on the yoke. I do have a sneaky seam there. I really love the contrast, really love how it turns out. I have five buttons there. Remember, you need to try on your bodices to figure out the height of your bust at your apex. Make sure you have a button exactly there so that you never have any gaping. Patterns always give you a reference, but just take it as a reference. You know, what you don't want is a button right above your apex and one below it. Even if the style has a lot of ease, you'll still end up with gaping anyway. So make sure you place a button there and then calculate above and then below that to figure out the spacing and all of that. So I got five there, I can put my head through there. I mean, I'm not gonna unbutton it, but I actually did all the button holes and the buttons, so you can open them all. You know, I always have such a good experience with button holes with my machine. You know, in a thousand button holes I've made over the years, maybe I've failed on two or three, so it's nothing that gives me any anxiety, so I just, I just do them. <laughs> Depends on my mood. Sometimes I just sew the buttons right through. Sometimes I'm pressed for time. Anyway, I took my sweet time to make this and I've got all the buttons and the buttonholes. I really love this. I think this is another alternative that's not in the pattern, but for sure you can make a top. You know, if you made this one a little longer, then you could just have a little bit of a longer top. If you made two of these short ones, you could have a tunic length or a really mini dress. So it's up to you <laughs> what you want in the length. I think this is the most important striking feature that doesn't change, but then the length can just really be what you want it to be. So let's see this one on. I've got it with my sporty lounge skirt in burgundy. It matches the burgundy right there. I think it's gonna be a really nice breezy top that I'm gonna love wearing. This is my first take the chance, but I made it as a top and not a dress. All I did was add a short tee, a little bit longer than the short tee, but all the rest is the same. I've paired it with my sporty lounge skirt, also from Pattern Emporium. It's 100% rayon, lightweight. It is a border print and I used the selvage edge for the skirt section of this top. Super comfy, ease around the waist. The bodice hits exactly at my waist. I used the tall length option. Shirt collar is so easy to sew. The sleeves fit really well. I have the regular short sleeve. There is a wider one and I have a contrasting yoke. It's all from the same fabric though. I haven't used different fabrics. Love this collar. I think it's really easy to sew, really approachable. I would never put buttons all the way up and you can put ties at the waist if you want to, but I just left mine loose so it's just breezy. I'm just really happy with how this fits. If I would have had time, I would have made more of these tops. I know I'm gonna wear them a lot.
I apologize if you can hear lawn mowing. There's someone cutting the grass a few houses down. Urgh. Anyway, my second one is a black dress. Now, I really wanted this dress to wear as a dress. I also wanted it like a little outer piece, like a type of duster type situation, jacket, if you will. And this one, I made it with a little heavier fabric. It's a rayon linen blend. It's got lovely texture. It's only got 13% linen here in the blend. I always sew with this type of fabric. I hope you can see the texture here. And I did everything the same. I have a contrast in a yoke there with another rayon just for fun. <laughs> I do save my scraps and I try to use them on little things that won't be noticeable. And then I don't have to cut that out of the main fabric. I have the same short sleeves, the same button placket. The only difference is that here I have the buttons going all the way down. Now I did a sneaky little thing with this dress. One as you can see is add chest pockets with a button. You can see them. I will put on the screen the measurements I use for my pocket but look if you have other patterns around that do have a chest pocket just borrow that pattern piece and put it on. You know <laughs> I just made my dress and at the very end I tried it on. I had my pocket already sewn and I just played around until I was happy. And then I sewed it on. I think it's it's pretty. Why not? I had the fabric. And then on the front, I just have one long tee. So instead of doing two tees, I just extended this first tee to the total length that I wanted, which in centimeters is 60 centimeters. In inches, that is 24 inches in imperial. But at the back, I have two tees. So I have a long one and then a short one. I modified the length of these to match up the same length on the front. So from the back you see two tiers, from the front you see one. I think it's just some fun that I like having with my sewing. <laughs> I'm using the same features. I'm just sort of mixing them around a little bit. So this one is slightly different, but I love it. I didn't put ties on this one like I have on this, just because I want to wear it like a jacket and I wear it open. I want to have ties just dangling around. <laughs> That was my reasoning. So it'll be a really nice easy fit dress and if I want to wear it open it would just be like a nice loose layer. I love doing that. That's the way I get around layering in hot weather. And yeah, let's see the styling on its own. I also made a take the chance dress. This one is a rayon with a bit of linen in the blend. A little heavier medium weight but with amazing drape. I also don't have the ties here and it's so comfortable, so nice. I used a lot of metal buttons here <laughs> and I added a few little extra details here. Just a few changes to the original pattern but it pretty much looks the same. I just have one T on the front so I just extended that first T full length. But at the back I have two tiers, one long one and one shorter one. So that is the difference with my dress. Just to do something a little different. <laughs> and at the top I have my same collar but I added some chest pockets. Just rectangles, really easy to add those. And I've got my yoke there, two layers. I have another layer inside and really love how this looks and how this fits. It's so easy to fit and easy to wear. And I love it as a dress on its own but I know I can wear it open as a sort of layer, like layer over another dress and that's how you're going to see it styled as well. Layered over one of my heartstring dresses, also from Pattern Emporium. Black and white little combo. Let's see. Here is my take the chance dress, but completely open. All these button holes and buttons are totally functional because I want to wear it like this. I have it over my heartstrings dress, also from Pattern Emporium, and I love the look. I love how this can be a really light layer for warmer weather and it's so versatile in black. I know I'm gonna get so much wear out of this. I made sure to make the hem a tiny bit longer than the hem of my dress so that it covers the dress completely. I wouldn't want the dress to peek through the hem 
of this dress so I think this is perfect and yeah so floaty so light so beautiful and I love having the two tees at the back I think it makes it a little bit different really enjoyable sew and I was very happy while I was sewing this one I'm so happy with my take the chance top and dress. I had to really, really take my time to choose the fabrics. I really wanted to make another one like this in a military green that I have in this type of fabric, but there was no time. But just know that I would have made five or 10 of these. So nice, so enjoyable. And I just love how I feel in them. Feels really nice. Let me know how you've got on with collars in the past. There are so many ways to sew collars and I think this is the easiest one. I'll have a link below to a video I made about a technique that is almost the same as this but on a denim jacket. So once you start getting your feet wet and start sewing more woven projects, you will start seeing some sewing techniques that appear that you've already done and it's basically almost the same thing on a whole array of styles like from a jacket to a shirt dress. This technique is so nice, I love it and I keep seeing it and I keep loving it because it's so nice. <laughs> really enjoyed this pattern i think you will like it too if you've never sewn anything like this i think all the techniques here are super doable the instructions are really good there's also videos made by kate at pattern emporium that you can watch for inspiration and also the techniques and it's just a great pattern you're gonna have a lot of fun with you know the options are always great and the fit is always so good so easy very wearable pieces and i'm very happy with mine remember that the new take the chance dress and the meet you there dress are both 15 percent off through monday midday in australian timing around brisbane so over here around sunday night 15 percent off you don't need to put in any code i will leave you my affiliate link down below that's all from me today i'll see you again very soon with more sewing and yeah go make a shirt dress or a top or a maxi. <laughs>